how you can edit your conductor library and you can also apply the knowledge to other libraries so that you can use the cables that you want to. So what you're going to do first is you're going to click libraries and you're going to go to conductors. Now immediately you'll see that you'll have an existing set of conductors set up. Now you can't edit the labels of these conductors, so the names, but you can edit the properties of these conductors. So if your conductor already exists, as in the name, so let's say for example hydrogen is the conductor I'm looking for, I can search that up and I can see that all the properties are also carried through. If the properties are wrong, I can edit the fields here and that would automatically save. However, if I am looking to use a conductor that doesn't exist in a conductor library already, I'm going to need to add it to the library. Now, how do you do that? Some of you may intuitively go down to the bottom and click add new entry, but that doesn't exist for the conductor libraries. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to click export. This is going to bring out a CSV file, uh, which is an Excel file format of the conductor library. Now what you're going to do is you're going to go to the very top, just above the first row, you're going to insert a row and uh, we're going to call this example conductor and you can give it a type. I'm just going to give it a AAC 1350, just copy that and I'm just going to give it a like bare conductor class. So you can actually see that if you click the filters here, you can look at all the different conductor classes being used at the moment. There's bare and insulated. Uh, also for the different types, there's all these different types that are being used at the moment. You can put in your own types. Uh, so that's what is happening there. So I'm just going to go back to my uh, Excel sheet. Now you can specify the number of strands. So I'm just going to do, let's say 10, uh, just a very arbitrary number. Y diameter, let's just do two. Overall diameter, let's do 10. Um, oh, sorry, no, overall, yep. Yep, let's just do that. Cross area, uh, 16. We're just giving it very random figures. So there we are. Break load, we're going to do three. Elasticity, we'll just do the same, 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 same. Make sure that the, uh, that the drag coefficient is also one. And your default string is going to be a dash, just like that. Description. This one is going to be example. And then that's it. So once you've populated the properties of your conductor, you're going to save this and then you're going to go into your Nira project and you're going to select replace in the conductor library. Now I said replace because what you're going to do is you're going to remove anything unused and replace it with your imported data. So note that my imported data is everything that exists plus my additional cable. If I did import, then it would bring everything in again and I would have duplicates. So I'm just going to do replace. I'm going to select OK, and I'm going to select that conductor file I just uh, created, and then you'll see that my new conductor is now inserted at the very top. So I can begin to use that by clicking my construction or conductor tool, and go to my conductor library and select the example, and then place my conductor. There we go.